Hey anyway guys, Alan here. Welcome back to my workshop. Um, starting on something completely different uh, this time, uh, different for me. Uh, I've got a friend who's asked me if I'm prepared to make uh, a large quantity of a particular part for him. This isn't something I've tried to do before. It's a pretty simple part, but because there's a lot of them, I need to be pretty efficient. So that's, that's the part. It's uh, some sort of a separator or divider or spacer, I guess you'd call it. Um, the exact dimensions aren't going to be very important for this, but uh, for the record, he wants it to be uh, 100 millimeters long, the critical dimension being f from face to face, not the overall length. Um, and then there's a threaded stub on each end with a 6 millimeter unthreaded bit and 20 millimeters worth of M10 thread. But the key is to be able to make these things, uh, both ends are the same by the way, but the key is to be able to make the thing uh, accurately to length between these faces. And uh, so I'm going to need to do some sort of a backstop set up in the lathe. So let's go and have a look and see what I've come up with. Okay, so to make some sort of a backstop, I um, had a close look at the situation in here. And what we can see is I've got a rather large bore all the way back there to hopefully you can just see what I'm pointing at. That's the front end of the spindle nose which is um, a smaller diameter than the chuck. So I can put something, make something which is a good fit inside the chuck bore and it would fetch up against the front of the spindle nose. So that gives me a register to, to work with. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll make basically, um, I suppose you call it a big, big slug <laughs> to, uh, to fit in there, register against there and have some ability to uh, space things off forwards. Okay, so I've got this uh, piece of uh, 76, well it's actually described as 65 nominal bore tube, but the OD is 76.2 uh, and I want it to be 76.15, so I'll get a, a sliding fit inside the bore of the, the chuck. Um, so I want, I want to take about uh, a piece about 60 millimetres long. I think we'll touch off at... Um 62. Uh, once I've got this piece to about the, the right OD, I'll just be hacking it off and then finishing the machining uh, in, in the chuck, directly in the chuck. So it's cleaned up all round. Oh, just barely there, but it has cleaned up all round. So finally we can get a true reading. So perhaps you can read that, 76.14. Don't know whether you'll be able to see that or not. Okay, well that finishes that part of the deal. So now it's time to hack that off and then move it up to the other chuck. Move it up to the chuck. Okay, so I've made this uh, sleeve to fit inside the chuck. Um, now I want to make um, a plug to go in the end that I can uh, drill and tap for a, a mounting stud, a limiting stud. Um, so, obviously I want that to be quite a firm fit there. Um, the sort of fit I'm aiming for, you'd need to knock it in gently with a hammer and then knock it out with a hammer. But uh, not super tight, just something that stays there when it's put there. Now, let's see if we can make that happen. Okay, so I've got to take 0.43 off the diameter of this um, inset piece, or this rebate. I think that's about uh, it's going to be the fit we're looking for. That's uh, starting, but it's tight. We might just get a mallet and... Uh, yeah, I think that's perfect. So I don't want it to be excessively tight, but you can see that's uh, going on with very little persuasion. So that's the fit I'm looking for. So all I have to do now is uh, saw this piece off and then uh, face it. 
Okay, so I thought I might as well start with the parting tool, at least you'll be able to get the um, bandsaw started in the right place. Well, it's in there quite a ways. Alright, well this parting off seems to be going alright, so I might as well see if I can finish it. I've drilled a 10mm hole through here, which will be right size for tapping. You have to excuse the racket in the background, these bloody building contractors again, they just never give up. There we go, parting off a three inch uh, diameter. All right, so clean the back up. So uh, one thing that caught me out was the um, the bore through the chuck um, changes. <laughs> the front part of the chuck, this was a nice fit, but the back part of the chuck body, uh, the hole through it was slightly smaller. So and that's why I've got two different diameters here. But uh, I thought it was interesting as well, just to have a look at the, the, the off the tool finish this bit of steel gave me. I mean, this hasn't been touched up with sandpaper or emery paper or anything. These are, that's just off the boring bar. And this off the, uh, off the tools as you saw. It's pretty impressive really, for a bit of um, just black pipe. I mean, it's not like it's free cutting steel or anything. And the better surface finishes I've managed to achieve anyway, especially for the boring bar. It's like it's been honed. Gotta win sometimes. Okay, so hopefully um, up the back there you can see the, the point of this pig stabber thing touching the uh, front of the spindle nose. So let's uh, slip this um, thing in. Uh, get this bolt out of the way for the moment. And you can see that the um, chuck jaws will slide over the top of that. And uh, allowing this thing, the uh, collet block, to fit in there. Like so. Excuse me, and I'll be able to put my uh, pieces. I'll uh, obviously I'll cut a whole bundle of them to length. I'll be able to slip them in there. They'll fetch up against the front face of the the big slug. Clamp that up, and um, Bob's your mother's brother. And for future jobs, I've got the flexibility that um, I can put a, a threaded stud in that 12 mil uh, M12 hole to um, uh, position the backstop. Uh, adjustably uh, within the collet block. So hopefully that will work out alright. Yeah, so anyway, we'll pull this all apart again. I, and I do also have the option, by the way, of, um, I don't know whether I'll have a reason to do it, but I can put a 12mm threaded rod right the way through the spindle um, to a back plate or to a plate on the back end of the spindle and uh, hold this in place. That is, it's pretty much going to be trapped in situ. Obviously with the jaws closed over the top it can't come out. But um, the, it isn't going to take much pressure just to uh, to hold it, uh, hold it in position against the front of the spindle nose. Anyway, there we go. Right, well that's another one done. Um, pretty sure this uh, would do the job if I take on the the uh, the project of making fifty. Of, I think it was fifty of those things for me, mate. Uh, but I also have a tool that's useful for other things uh, afterwards. 
Um, one thing I didn't say was that the external diameter here is not critical. So I can just use, if I take it on, I'd just be using a um, 16mm uh, diameter rod, just cut to length, so that's why it would work so well working with the collets in that collet block. Um, anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching anyway. If you did though, maybe you could subscribe. That helps me understand what people like seeing and so on. Uh, but in any case, I hope to see you on the next one. Cheers.